Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. Thank you for your comments on my last video regarding live streaming. I do appreciate it. It gave me a lot of things to think about and consider. Next, I want to say thank you to U-N-G-G-O-D. I don't know if that's Ungod, 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 Ungod. I'm so bad with pronouncing things. But Ungod recommended that I make a soft hammer. And I've done that. This soft hammer is actually made out of wood, which doesn't strike me as something that's very soft, necessarily. But it's called a soft hammer to distinguish it from the hammer, which is just called a hammer, which you would think would be called a hard hammer, but it's just called a hammer. Anyway, the hammer is made from metals, but the soft hammer is not made from metals. You can make it from wood, as I've done, and you can also make it from rubber, which is usually the other way that it's made, which really makes me feel like that instead of being called a soft hammer, it should be called a mallet, but whatever. Anyway, the hammer is what we use to turn ingots into plates like this, and it's also used to make various recipes, and I just broke that hammer. But the soft hammer does not turn ingots into plates. Instead, and it's in the tooltip there at the very bottom, the soft hammer is used to turn on and off your machines. So if you right click this, you will see that the machine processing disabled, right click it, machine processing enabled. And you can do that with any of the machines. And that is actually very important. And I'll show you why. Oops. And it can also apparently rotate chests. All right. With the Greg Tech machines, you have an issue that's called the insufficient energy line issue. And basically that means that you have to have all of the energy you need to perform a function or you're going to waste the energy. In this case, the energy is steam because that's the steam we're using. But the idea is that and, and I'm just going to make up a number, but if it takes a thousand steam for this furnace to process one crushed ore into 10 nuggets, it takes a thousand steam for this progress bar to make it all the way across. If you only gave it 500 steam, it would get about halfway done and then stop. But then the progress resets. It goes all the way back to the beginning. So if you then provide it with another 500 steam, Again, you're going to go about halfway, stop, and then reset at the beginning. So it's not the case with machinery from other mods where if you gave it 500 steam, it would be halfway, and then later you give it another 500 steam, and it would finish the process. It has to have all of the steam in order to complete the entire process, or that you are providing it with steam fast enough uh, at, at a high enough quantity that it can do it too so that that would work as well so again what you don't want is a situation where you could provide it 500 steam it resets you provided another 500 steam it resets another 500 it resets and you can constantly do that and it never will end up processing because it never got the full amount of steam. And that's why you would use your soft hammer to turn off the machinery, let it build back up its internal reservoir of steam, which there's, there's no interface that shows how much that is, but it would build up over time and then you would be, you would be okay with turning the machine back on and letting it process, it would have enough steam to do the entire process. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, leave me a comment and let me know. I'll try to see if I can find a different way to explain it. But essentially, you want to be able to turn your machine off with the mallet so that you don't waste energy, in this case waste steam, because there's not enough to do the complete process of whatever you're doing. So I've been doing some experimentation. You can see here I have 
a steam furnace. This works like a regular furnace and it cooks things. I have the steam alloy smelter and I've been using that to make my bronze. And of course I have my steam macerator, which I use to turn my ores into the crushed ores in order to get more uh, out of each ore. And I've been doing some experimenting. I've got my uh, coal, my small coal boilers up here. I say boilers, I have three of them. I don't know if I had that many before, but I've got three of them there. And you can see they are full of water. I am supplying them water from this water tank through these bronze fluid pipes. And then they then pipe their steam into this rail craft iron tank. And then the steam comes out of the iron tank to the machinery. Now using Wayla, if you look at the iron tank, you can see on the left upper left hand side is where I have my Wayla. It shows that there is zero in it. But if I right click and look, I just tell me I have 576 buckets of steam. And I believe that Greg Tech uses liters as the measurement for a bucket. So that would be 576 liters of steam. I could be wrong about that, but I think that's how it works. So, and out here is just a little of experiment that I've been doing as well. I managed to find some silver. So I made a solar boiler here. And so this rail craft water tank is supplying water directly to the solar boiler. So I discovered this I did after that and I discovered I did not need to use pipes to get the water in there. So it produces some steam and it sends it into the same tank. So this is nice because it works fairly consistently. You can see it is actually full of steam. The one thing that I've noticed is it looks like this solar boiler works even at night which really surprises me because it seems like something that Greg would not allow so I don't know if it's supposed to work at night I don't know if it's a bug or an error or a problem but I am not going to complain about that that is for sure now as I mentioned I'm using these bronze fluid pipes and these are from Greg Tech and I really like these pipes for a couple of different reasons and I'm going to show you why. So the first thing to note is that there are different sizes of the pipes. Tiny, small, no descriptor, so just the regular size, large, and then huge. And each one of the sizes represents how much fluid can move through it at a time. So you can see the tiny one is 200 liters per second. The small is 400 liters per second, copper is 1200 all the way up to the huge at 4800 liters per second. So that must be, this must be 576,000 liters, not 576 liters, that would be my guess. Anyway, going back, and, and that no matter what they're made out of, they all have that same capacity, uh, or not, not that they don't have the same capacity, but they have different capacities if they are made of different kinds of materials. So you see a tiny copper fluid pipe is 200 liters per second, but a tiny bronze fluid pipe is a little bit better, can do 400 liters per second. But in addition, the copper pipes can only handle 1000 Kelvin as their temperature heat limit. The bronze fluid pipes can handle 2000, and then you can see the different kinds of pipes that you can make. They handle different amounts of fluid through them as well as different temperature amounts. But one of the other things that I really like about this is that as you can see in NEI, the sizes are different. So the tiny pipe is smaller than the huge pipe. And I don't have any different size pipes than what I have now, but if I did and I laid them out, you would see that they draw on the screen and render at different sizes which is something I just think is really cool because most of the time with other pipes, they all are the same size, even if they can transport more items. So I like the idea of having them be a different size. Now, another thing that I like about them, which is cool, these pipes here are carrying hot steam, hot steam from the Railcraft iron tank. So if you go near them, 
you get hurt because it's hot steam. Kind of cool. I like that sort of realism. These pipes are carrying water. Cold water. So I can stand next to these pipes. No problem. They do not hurt me because they just have cold water in them. But if it's got hot steam in it, it will hurt. For whatever reason, I think that is pretty cool. Now, one thing when I was making these pipes, and these are fairly easy to make. I'm not going to do a lot of recipe showing, but these, these pipes are easy to make. They're plates with the hammer and the wrench, various configurations like so. I think the huge ones do require machinery, so I can't make those quite yet. But anyway, one thing that I noticed when I was looking at these fluid pipes is that Greg Tech also has item pipes. And you can see here that the a brass item pipe will move one stack per second. Large brass item pipe too. So they move different stack amounts. There's restrictive pipes. And then there's these routing values. I don't know what that means. But I thought to myself, I wonder if I could use these or how they are used. I don't know how they are used, to be honest with you. But one thing I know is I need brass plates and brass plates or brass is a is made in an alloy smelter. Oops, sorry, regular brass, there we go, is made in the alloy smelter. And it is a combination of copper and zinc. And I believe that I have found some zinc somewhere. Nickel zinc. There's some zinc. I've got some, I got four zinc there. So I think what I want to do is make some brass, make a brass item pipe, and see if I can get it to move items just to see if it works. So I'm going to make the pipe and I'll come back in just a bit. Well, I only had enough zinc to net me two brass item pipes. Kind of funny. But disappointment, it is not taking out copper nuggets from the steam furnace and placing it in this chest. I actually did not think that it would work. That would be a little bit too easy. So not going to be using these brass item pipes anytime soon, but it was kind of fun just to check them out. Now, the next thing I want to do, I still need to build a few more steam machines. And I think the next one I should make will be the, let's see, I'm at the macerator. The extractor will get me rubber, the forge hammer, the compressor. I think I want to make the steam forge hammer. And it's going to take a lot of bronze and a lot of iron. So I am going to work on that next. Okay, so I made a slight mistake. I cannot yet make the steam forge hammer. And the reason for that is the crafting recipe for that requires an anvil. Anvils require blocks of iron. But... With Greg Tech, you cannot take nine ingots and turn it into a block. That is too simple. Instead, what you need to do is you need to put nine ingots into a compressor. So I built the steel, the steel, the steam compressor first, and this will allow me to turn nine iron ingots into a block of iron. This, of course, takes a little while, but now that I have the ability to do that, I can finish making my anvil and finish making my steam forge hammer. Yes, it's definitely nighttime. And my solar boiler is definitely working. I just have to say, this solar boiler, which apparently can operate off of starlight, is the most impressive solar boiler ever. Ever. That's awesome. And it's raining, and the solar boiler is still working. There you go. Simply amazing. We need this technology in the real world. But on a serious note, this does make me think I should look for some more silver 
or try to find a vein of silver somehow because more of these solar boilers would be great. The regular boilers work really good. They work a lot better, but I have to keep remembering to put coal in them. This, as you can see, I can just set it up like this and it's just gonna produce steam. If I found a few more of those, that would work out really great. Something I did not mention before is this mod pack has a book that was written by the mod pack creator and you can use this as a guideline for so, your ores. It talks about the small ores, which I've talked about. It talks about the ore veins and what can be found in them. It has the where the, with the small ores where what what levels they can be found at, what mining level you need for them, and what dimensions, whether it's overworld, nether, or what have you. And then the large ore veins are like this. And they give you the same kind of information and then there's even a little bit of the mining tool levels so this tells you you know like level zero would be plastic rubber and wood level two obviously is the majority of things all the way up to a level six so that's really nice so if you're interested in finding oops let me go back that's not what i wanted if i was looking for do, do, do. Where am I at here? No. Is that what I want? Ah, here we go. If I was looking for, say, silver, I click on that, and I can find that I would have to look for a Galena, a Galena ore vein, which would be levels 30 to 60, and it would be available in the overworld, but that would have silver in it. So that's what I would be looking for is a Galena ore vein. So a very, very useful book to have. And it's easily made. You just need one iron ore. Well, you can see the recipe there. It's a very simple recipe to make that, but very, very useful. Okay, and now I have a forge hammer in my hand. And we'll place that next in the line. And there we go, forge hammer. And what does this do? Uh, this is great. Steam Forge Hammer essentially acts like the hammer does. So it will turn ores into crushed ores. But perhaps more importantly, as we scroll through pages and pages of stuff, it will turn two ingots into a plate. So if I put uh, two iron ingots there, chunk, chunk, chunk 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 and there we go iron plate so basically this allows me to make the plates that I've been using the hammer to make I won't have to use up a, a durability on a hammer I won't have to use that anymore I can use the steam forge hammer to make my plates and that is really very nice how's my steam going steam's going really well these guys are working really well I believe the next thing to make is a blast furnace. The bronze plated blast furnace. And this is what we use to make steel. And steel is of course very important because steel is what we will need in order to progress past the Bronze Age, past using steam, uh, getting the more advanced stuff going. So we need to make this bronze plated blast furnace. But wait, you say, doesn't Railcraft have a blast furnace that makes steel? It does. But this recipe is disabled in this mod pack because of course that would be too simple. But wait, doesn't Industrial Craft have a blast furnace? Yes, it does. That recipe is also disabled because that would be too easy. So yes, we need to make a bronze plated blast furnace. As you can see, it is a multi-block structure. It is three by three by four, which would be with an opening at the top. And as it says there, we need 32 bronze plated bricks. We need this 
bronze plated blast furnace this is sort of the control block if you will as you can see it requires four bronze plates and some furnaces no big deal there but then we also need 32 bronze plated bricks so bronze plated bricks and these things are like this and they each require six bronze plates so six times 32 is a hundred and ninety two I think sounds about right 30 times 6 is 180 2 times 6 is 12 that's 192 plus 4 more for this piece that's 196 so we double that to get to figure out how many pieces of bronze we actually need so 200 times 2 is 400 minus 8 392 bronze I will need 392 bronze so let's just round that up to 400 I'm gonna need 400 bronze and with the ratio that means I need 110 and 300 copper which is a lot of ore so that is the next big thing in addition to some bricks but that should be fairly simple but that is something that's going to be in the next episode that's going to do it for this episode. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them for me down below. I love to read them and I will respond to them. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.